Today we're going to learn how to tune our instrument. I hope you came prepared and brought your water bottle. Tuning is a very important part of playing a stringed instrument because your instrument can fall out of tune at any time depending on many factors including the weather, structural problems, or bad luck. <laughs> In order to tune your instrument, we'll start with the fine tuners. The fine tuners are the silver screws located in the tailpiece of your instrument. Bases, you'll notice that you do not have fine tuners. Your tuners are called machine heads and they're located near the scroll of your instrument. Those are the tuners that you'll be learning to use. It's important never to let an inexperienced person try and tune your instrument. This usually results in a broken string or some other issue at the end. Not to mention, most likely, they'll be unsuccessful. So now, you have to become the expert on your instrument. All of this information may seem a little overwhelming today because it's quite a lot to deal with. But if you feel you need to review the lesson, I will post it online so that you can watch it again at home as many times as you like. This way, you can master tuning in your own time during your personal practice hours and come to class fully prepared. Today we'll only be working with the fine tuners or basses machine heads. Do not attempt to tune your instrument using the pegs near the scroll until Mrs. Capaletti or your private instructor teaches you how and instructs you that it is okay. Most breaks when it comes to tuning happen when a peg is turned too quickly in the wrong direction. Protect your instrument, protect your investment, and please practice tuning with the fine tuners first. We will get to the pegs later on. If you have a major string issue, you can always bring it to the teacher, either me or your private teacher, before you begin to play, and we will happily tune your instrument using the pegs. Today, you're going to learn to tune using the fine tuners. The fine tuners are the silver tuners located in the tailpiece of your instrument. Basses, you're going to learn to tune using your machine heads, which are the only tuners on your instrument. Before we get started, let's make sure that everybody has their water bottle. The water bottle will be important because we're going to begin with the water bottle so that you can get a feel for which way to turn the fine tuners. So this will tell you whether to tighten or loosen or stay the same, but either way you'll get a feeling for turning the screw or the cap in order to tune your instrument properly. First things first, before we can even hope to tune our instrument, we have to be able to differentiate between pitches that are matching and pitches that are not matching. So, I'm going to go through a few pitches with you, and you're going to have to tell me whether it's matching or unmatching. If the pitch is matching, meaning the pitch that the instrument is playing is the same as the pitch that the tuner is sounding, then I would like you to sit in your seat and do nothing. If the pitch, however, is not matching, I would like you to raise your hand as soon as you think it is not matching. For each pitch, the tuner will play throughout and the instrument will play the pitch three times. Again, if the pitch is matching, do nothing and sit in your seat. But if the pitch is unmatching, as soon as you've decided that the pitches don't match, raise your hand.
of the first round, that's because you're orchestra students. <laughs> nice job. For the second round, I'm going to throw a challenge at you. You're still going to decide whether the pitch is matching or unmatching. If the pitch is matching, you'll put a flat hand on top of your water bottle. If the pitch is unmatching, there are one or two things that you can do. Make sure that the water bottle is screwed on tight or make sure the cap is twisted completely off. If the sounding pitch is too high, then you'll need to twist the cap completely off. If the sounding pitch is too low, then you'll have to twist the cap completely on. I'll go through that again. If the pitch is matching, put a flat hand over the top of the water bottle. If the pitch is too high, twist the cap completely off. If the pitch is too low, twist the cap completely on. Matching, sharp, lefty, loosey, flat, righty, tighty. Matching, sharp, lefty, loosey, flat, righty, tighty.
In music, when the pitch is too low, we call that being flat. When the pitch is too high, we call that being sharp. What happens in music when the pitch is too low? What should we call that? Right, flat. When the pitch is too high, what should we call that? Right, sharp. So this time, I'll rephrase the directions using our musical lingo. If the pitch is matching, put your hand flat over the cap. If the pitch is sharp, unscrew the water bottle cap all the way off. If the pitch is flat, screw the cap all the way on. Once more. If the pitch is matching, put a flat hand over the water bottle. If the pitch is too sharp, screw the cap all the way off. If the pitch is too flat, screw the water bottle cap all the way on. Matching, sharp, lefty, loosey, flat, righty, tidy.
round, we're going to hold our water bottles in a different position. Everybody make sure you're holding your water bottle with your right hand. Violinists and violists, you'll be holding your water bottle here at the left shoulder. You'll be twisting with your left hand. Now don't cheat and hold it out in front of you and twist this way because then you won't get the right feeling for your tuning pegs. So again, with your right hand, hold the water bottle against your left shoulder. You'll be twisting on and off with your left hand. Cellists, make sure you're holding the water bottle with your right hand. Put the water bottle on your right knee and twist with the left hand. Again, cellists, hold your water bottle at your right knee and twist with your left hand. Make sure that the water bottle isn't pointing up, but that it's pointing out from your knee, just as your fine tuners do on your instrument. Bases. Make sure you're holding the water bottle in your right hand and you'll move the bottle so that the cap of the bottle is outside of your peripheral vision on the left side of your face. You'll be twisting the cap with your left hand. Again, bases, make sure you're holding in your right hand and that the bottle is on the left side outside of your peripheral vision. You'll be twisting with the left hand. Matching, sharp, lefty, loosey, flat, righty, tighty. Matching, sharp, lefty, loosey, flat, Righty tidy.
step before we can truly know that we're able to tune ourselves is understanding the process of tuning. In my classroom, I will play the tuner for you so that you can hear each individual open string. We'll always start with A, just like the professionals do. You'll listen to A for five seconds. You'll know the five seconds are up because I'll hold up five fingers and count down. So, for the first five seconds, it's important that you freeze in playing position with the tip of your bow on the A string and you'll just listen for five seconds like this. Then you come in very softly on your own instrument with an up bow. You'll notice that softly is really playing for yourself. You could barely hear my violin. And the more consistent and smooth you can keep the bow, the better you'll be able to compare pitch. It's much harder, for example, to compare pitch when you do this. pressure I'm placing on the instrument throughout the stroke, then you hear these swells of sound and it can be deceiving. You may not think that my A matched that time because I was getting louder and softer in weird intervals. So as you play, it's very important when you tune that you start at the tip and you take very long smooth strokes. so that you can really hear your pitch as clear as a bell and only you are focusing on your own pitch. Think of how annoying it would be if your stand partner or someone near you were trying to tune like this. Which A do you think you would hear? This one or this one? So it's important when we tune, first, to be conscious of the people around us, and second, to be conscious of our own pitch, and play very softly and smoothly so that we can truly compare our instrument to the tuner. Remember, you have to listen to each string for five seconds before you can play at all. Those five seconds really allow your brain to attach to the correct pitch before you make a comparison on your own instrument. Make sure you take full advantage of that time. Sometimes it helps me to really close my eyes so that my ears open up even farther and I can really listen to that pitch and internalize the pitch my instrument should match. Once you've finished tuning and you're satisfied that your A matches, simply stop playing and sit quietly. Don't start playing another song or talking to a neighbor because it's just as annoying as the person who's playing their A too loudly. It's distracting and it takes away from the other people around you that are still trying to listen, internalize, and tune. Ask yourself these essential questions. Can I differentiate between a pitch that is matching the tuner or a pitch that is unmatching the tuner? Can I differentiate not only that a pitch is matching or not, but if it's too sharp or too flat? Which way should I turn the fine tuner if the pitch is too sharp? Which way should I turn the fine tuner if the pitch is too flat? Should I touch the pegs myself if I haven't been instructed to by Mrs. Capaletti or my private instructor? When is a good time to let a family member tune your instrument? How long will my instrument stay in tune for?
Could I possibly help a friend who even plays a different instrument to tell them whether their pitch is sharp, flat, or matching? Do you feel confident in your ability to tune the strings of your instrument with your fine tuners?